Hi, my name is Christian Hyde. I'm a managing director of RISC 360 and I help oversee our ISO 27001 practice. This is our ISO 27001 Explained series where we cover all of the controls and control objectives in ISO 27001 and try to give you some information about how you can achieve certification if you're considering that or implementing the ISO 27001 framework in general. Today we're going to cover off on control objective 12.1 that's around operation security and operational procedures and responsibilities. So control 12.1 uh, talks about securing operations of information processing facilities. So one of the biggest pieces of confusion on control objective 12, which is a really large control objective, there's a lot of control objectives and controls within, uh, is this, is what does it cover? What is the scope of processing facilities? And you'll hear that term. So to add some clarity to that point, uh, to start, I wanted to refer to uh, an accompanying standard the ISO 27002 standard, this is the implementation guidance for 27001. So here on the left hand side of my screen you see uh, the control objectives. So control 12.1 has four controls here and the second framework I here have here is uh, ISO 27002 which is the implementation guidance. And what uh, control objective 12 is covering when it talks about processing facilities is right here in this implementation guidance and you can see what it's really talking about is your really your IT infrastructure and your network so it's not necessarily like application security or product security so put that to a side for a second because control objective 12 uses words like change management and capacity management things like that so ignore your product on this one just a bit because I because in my opinion Product and applications covered in the system development lifecycle that's uh, later in ISO. Operation security is more focused on your infrastructure um, and, and, and things like that. So that's an important uh, consideration for this control objective and, and use that to think through all the future controls and control objectives that we talk about in this section. So hopping in here um, uh, to the standard, um, like I said on the left hand side of my screen here is the ISO standard. On the right hand side of my screen is RISC 360's information security policy template. If you're a client of RISC 360 and we're helping you with ISO implementation, you have access to this template and of course we'll customize it to you and, and help you walk through it. But for the purpose of today, this will be a good example of what a policy could look like. So let's cover off on those four controls and review what that might look like. So control 12.1.1 is about documented operating procedures. So that is exactly what it sounds like. It, uh, you need to have a policy and standard operating procedures when it comes to uh, operation security. So functionally, if you're being audited, it looks like taking all of these controls to follow and putting them in standard operating procedures. So you'll see things like change management, capacity management, uh, separation of development and test environments, things like that. And it's just communicating right up front that you need to have these documented in standard operating procedures, not policy. So policy is kind of that high level, um, high level context and uh, requirements that an organization sets forth. Your standard operating procedures are something that an actual operator would reference to do their job. Operating procedures can exist in something like a Confluence wiki, SharePoint sites, a regular old Word document, but it'll be very uh, much tactical in nature, probably produced by the practitioner themselves. Uh, the next one is 12.1.2 is around change management. So again, what is change management? Uh, I think it has a specific scope as related to control objective 12. Uh, it's not related to system development lifecycle changes like product and application. It's more uh, referring directly to your infrastructure and your network change management. So for example, if you're going to uh, make changes to Active Directory, if you're going to make changes to routers and switches or, or corporate infrastructure, this is where I think that hits. So you want a change management policy when it comes to that. Where things get a little fuzzy is if you're in the cloud and your infrastructure is something like a, a continuous integration, continuous development environment, so you're doing like infrastructure as code. Um, that is going to be very different than if you're doing change management in a typical, uh, you know, a typical infrastructure stack. So what that means for you as an organization, you might have one or the other or both. So you might need to have two separate change management policies to deal with each. So you might have one change management policy that deals with 
uh, corporate infrastructure. You might have another change management uh, policy that deals with like cloud infrastructure. And that'll be very much dependent on your organization and your technology stack. But in either case, you need to consider the same uh, types of things. So a typical change management policy will have things like um, all changes are requested, all changes are tested, all changes are approved, uh, there's rollback procedures, etc. So, you know, standard change management processes. In our template policy here, we've laid out a lot of those steps, so you can think through that. Um, but do distinguish this separately from a typical system development lifecycle. So your SDLC will probably be like a modern DevOps or agile environment um, that will be very different than how you might change typical infrastructure. So create some separation there and just think through how that's applicable to your organization. Again, if you're a RISC360 client and you're working with us, we have really great templates for each of those scenarios as a starting point, and we'll typically help you with walkthroughs, kind of differentiate uh, each type of change and have policies and SOPs as relevant for you. 12.1.3 uh, is around capacity management. So what that functionally means is uh, thinking on infrastructure again, um, how do you know if something is at risk of failing because there's load balancing issues or uh, your throughput uh, can't handle the volume that you have. So like if you're using something like a traditional corporate network and you're monitoring your active directory systems that might look like having something like solar winds that's telling you if your servers are running the rest of uh, cpu or ram or memory or storage capacity issues if you're something uh, uh like a cloud infrastructure on aws maybe you have cloud watch or something similar installed so it's just how do you manage capacity how do you uh, make sure that you have the appropriate approaches to scalability and you're not at risk at uh, uh, bandwidth issues. Um, for 12.1.4, this is around separation of development tests and operational environments. So for me, this plays off of the uh, change management control and some of the best practices related to that. And what that really means is as you're making changes, you have a separate place that you're doing development and where you're testing those environments versus your production environment. So what ISO is really saying in, is that you're not doing tests and you're not making changes directly into the production environment that could impact your employees and your customers, that you're doing all of that testing somewhere separate and then rolling it out. That's a little bit complex if you're, if you're doing like infrastructure changes because often someone doesn't have a separate uh, network that they can do testing on. So you have to think through th uh, for your organization, let's say you're making firewall changes or, or some piece of infrastructure is a change, you might want to isolate that, run some tests locally, make sure, do a proof of concept and then roll that out to the organization at large. Although there's a temptation to make changes directly in the production environment or in the production network or in production infrastructure. From an audit perspective, uh, make sure that you have distinct environments documented um, or if it's a temporary test environment, for example, document that in a ticket um, so that if it's audited and when it's audited for certification purposes or by QA manager, there's distinct steps that you documented that was in the test environment and it's uh, pretty clear audit documentation there. That is sometimes a gotcha when it comes to the certification audit uh, part of ISO 27001 is that even if you were disciplined about doing testing and some kind of clean environment that's not production, maybe you didn't document that. So the auditor has nothing to, to verify that. So do make sure you have uh, solid documentation in addition to functionally uh, having a separate environment. So that's an introduction to control objective number 12 and control objective 12.1 around uh, standard operating procedures and those four controls. In the remainder of this series, we're gonna break out each uh, control objective um, uh, for op security into 12.2, uh, 12.3, 12 12.4, etc. So continue the series to see the rest of this. This is really uh, a huge section for ISO 27001, so we're going to break these out just a bit. Hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thanks.